In the blue and gray we're fighting I found a blood brother And when the smoke had cleared We stuck with each other Spilled blood at Chickamauga And the cannons roared that day But it bound us together To right thinking ways We were blood brothers And we're blood brothers all Blood brothers Don't let me fall Now in the days to come My blood brother learned That he could never work Without sharing what he earned He always had his moment And I had songs to sing Playing all our music For the love that women bring We were blood brothers And we're blood brothers all wagon coming. Hey! You going to Virginia City? That ain't far. You can walk it. Oh. My friend here twisted his ankle pretty bad. All right, hop in the back. Thank you. Nice man here, all for this ride. Oh, come on, Pete. Thank you, nice man. Thank you, nice man. be okay? Thank, Thank you very much. You. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. I'm all right. Get on. Get on. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. All right, you boy? Yeah. Yep. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just be a minute. Hey, listen, Joe. Yeah. Uh, don't look around. Just look like we're saying hello and how are you. Uh, how's everything at the ranch, Marcus? Oh, fair to fiddling, Joe. Them three on the tailgate. They're weary willies. I want you to help me tie them up so I can take them into the sheriff. Well, just because they wear raggedy old uniforms and keep on the move don't necessarily mean... Hey, Dusty. And when I was in Carson City, I remember I looked at a wanted poster. I don't know what it is the guy did, but it seems to me they said he was a weary will. Was there a picture of him? Yeah. yeah. I think I could recognize him. Wouldn't hurt to take a look. I'll cover you. Hold it! Marcus, hold it! You just said it. I said I saw a poster. I didn't say they were on it. They ran, didn't they? Look, I'd run, too, if you pulled a gun on me. You're going to be sorry. You wait and see. Worry willies are like a swarm of locusts. Where well, there's one... Soon there'll be a hundred. You mark my word. Looks like a nice place for a permanent camp. I'm in a temporary permanent camp. Well, you like it so much, why don't you go blaze a trail? I would, Billy, but uh, this ankle's giving me fits. It must have been all that running. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it.
Somebody's coming. Hey, they were the ones on the buckboard. You better start limping, Pellerman. My name's Joe Cartwright. This is our foreman, Dusty. That's right, Joseph. We're the ones who are on that wagon. And the reason we jumped off and hit out for the woods is... No need to explain. First off, I'm sorry Marcus shot at you. What's second off? Second off, I'm glad he's a bad shot. <laughs> and third, you're welcome to stay a while. How long a while? Well, just how long as you have in mind. You know, my friend Palaman here twisted his ankle pretty bad. She would like to give it a good rest. My friend Krulak, well... He thinks we ought to settle down and get jobs. No ranch worker. I'm no good on a horse. They might be hired at one of the mines. Yeah, I'll bet that pays good money. We ought to check into that tomorrow. I'll tell you what, we're going to be in town this evening. We'll ask around. Oh, no, no, no need to put yourself out. Oh, glad to help. Good luck to you. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Take it easy with the angle. I wish I had a chunk of butter to see if it melt in your mouth. Well, you know what I'd like? I'd like to see you putting in 10 hours a day in a mine. Oh, there's nothing I'd like better. As soon as this ankle heals. <laughs> yeah, you better take it easy on the jig in there. <laughs> you know what I'd like? I'd like to stay put for a while. Why don't we? Looks to me like we just found the right spot. What? Howdy. Howdy. Oh, All right. Got a list here, and uh, you can take your time in filling it. No hurry. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna have to order some of this. Uh, can I help you, Jamie? Uh, I can't afford it. <laughs> Jamie, I just paid your week's wages for doing the chores. Well, I know, but well, I like to kind of keep it in one piece for a while. <laughs> Hey, Major, I met three fellows this morning. They were looking for work. I wonder if you had anything for them. Well, I could use one of them, but uh, just temporary. I think it'll be all right. They're drifters just passing through. Weary willies. No weary willies for me. I don't want them in my store. They're all alike, troublemakers. I haven't heard of any trouble they've caused. They're scum, every one of them. I had my fill of them during the war. They were a disgrace to the uniform then. They haven't earned enough sense to buy a new suit of clothes. They're all crackpots in one way or another. I had a pot of jelly beans in that order, wouldn't you? Jamie. Thank you. Hey. Looks like somebody found a good place. Far from here? No, well, maybe a half a mile. Oh, hallelujah, I'm about ready to drop. You don't happen to have any sugar, do you? Yeah, some. About half a pound. Well, it's my turn to say hallelujah. <laughs> hey, what is it, a barn? No, just a field. There are woods to keep the wind off. <laughs> Sounds like a real nice place. Well, I got permission to stay. We're going into town for a while if you want to come along. Well, maybe I'd like to dip my hands and splash my face and just sit for a while. Well, uh, suit yourself. Just a minute, Mills. Mills? Let me take care. Woman, well, pretty's used for looking at, not for lifting things. Thank you. It's a pleasure, miss. You own this store? My father does. He lets me close up sometimes, if he's busy. No, well, I just made up my mind. I'm gonna give you all my business. Now, you're making fun of me. A little. You mind? <laughs> no. I guess it doesn't do any harm. Then maybe I'll see you again. Uh, I'm here every day. What was that about? Well, it was about a pretty girl in the grocery store, Pellerman. Man's got to keep his eye on the future. Uh, those fellas bothering you, Angie? As a matter of fact, they weren't. Well, I just thought I'd walk you home. Thank you. But I can find the way.
They've got green poker tables at the Silver Dollar Saloon. Watered down whiskey on a hot afternoon. I'm a castaway stranger with a dollar or two. Guess you can tell that I'm just passing like through. a bird, Donnie. Smile at that barmaid, Lord, but she just don't care. Her starched and store-bought boyfriend tells me not to stare. And I've got no silver dollars to tip her when I'm through. Guess she can tell that I'm just passing through. Do we have a law against vagrants? She don't Beggars? We'll have two beers. Right. And one for our friend there. That'll be 25 cents a piece. Price of beer's going up in advance. Hey, that song's got to be worth something. Now look, mister, I can't buy a new keg of beer with that song. Now you fellas either shove out or get out. Just relax and enjoy the music. Boy sings like a bird, don't he? You heard me. Now you fellas either walk out of here or else get thrown out. And if you need any help, I'll take care of that song very nice. You touch him and I'll... I'll tell you what you do, Mr. Now you get out of here. I need both of you right now. I'd rather roam. Yes, I'd rather be a man just Billy? passing through. No, 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 no applause, please. On the friendly feeling in the room is sufficient reward. Good night. Hey, we thought we might. You still looking for work? Oh, yeah, sure. I talked to the foreman at the Silver King Mine. He's looking for men. Just bringing this note to take care of. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Take care. You fellas ready for that drink? Yeah, we're kind of down on our luck tonight. That's all right. You got rich friends. You got enough for a couple of rounds. No, not this saloon. What's wrong with it? And I hope you don't think I'm being snobbish, but the people that frequent this place are rather low element, if you know what I mean. Hey, Dusty. What? Uh, Two fellows have just joined him. It's the guy on the poster in Carson City. Hey, uh... Let's go talk to the sheriff. Mr. Cartwright, what's a weary willy? Well, Jimmy, uh, it's a man who goes from one place to another looking for himself. he's lost. You mean he doesn't know where he is? No. He doesn't know who he is. Or why he's here. Or even what he's looking for. Oh, you mean like someone who doesn't know what he wants to be when he grows up? Something like that. See, a man goes away to war and he lives every minute in danger and misery and mud and and he comes back and he's changed and he can't figure out why the rest of the world hasn't changed as much as he has so he goes looking mr cartwright joe's back oh good yes he must have got word from the sheriff in carson city huh yeah, he was the one, all right. We got a telegram from Carson City. Well, what did they look for? Well, he was wanted for robbery and murder. A lynch mob started to gather, and he managed to get away. And about two days later, they found out they had the wrong man. 
I guess he just looked guilty. What kind of look is that? Different, Jamie. He looked different, so they figured he had to be guilty. Curiosity. I'll bet you got coffee too. Yes. And sugar and salt and canned beans too. All that too. Yeah. And you got just what I need. <laughs> but I ain't got no money. I'm sorry. We don't give credit to strangers. Uh, don't be sorry. I don't believe in credit neither. Now I did notice that your back fence needs painting. And I can chop wood and sweep out the store. Any work you need done, I can do it. Well, hey, you play the guitar? No, I don't. Well, how'd you like to learn? I mean, you'd be surprised how fast you could learn to play the guitar. I tell you what, you give me five dollars worth of stuff, I'll give you ten lessons. How's that? Get out of here before you say one more word, or I'll call the sheriff. Pa! You don't need the sheriff. You stay out of this, Edward. Come on, you. Come on. Come on. Hey, Edward, now! You don't want to get your hands dirty. Sorry. I'm gonna teach you the guitar anyway. Friends who came with me feel the same way I do. That's very commendable. Don't you think this is going just a little too far? Chopping down trees without asking permission? <laughs> now, woods thick as this, you don't thin out the trees, they'll all die. Well, I'm grateful for that information. And I see your building here. Well, I guess the shelter, we'll take it down when we go, leave the place like it was when we got here. Sir, the way I see it, this clearing's no good to you anyway. Hey, Willies! Woo! Ah! Ah! My ah. point of my life is catching sight of that stack of rocks back there on the road. <laughs> we haven't seen a friendly face in over a month. My regards. Hope you have some tea. My wife's expecting, and the coffee don't set well. Didn't you bring tea, Angie? Yes, and the kettle's already simmering. It won't take just a minute to bring it to a boil. Oh. Oh, well, thank you. How soon are you due? Well, I reckon by the next morning. You gotta admit, they sure are a friendly bunch. The problem is you gotta stop it somewhere. You can't just let them keep coming in. They'll be swarming all over the ranch. I know. Well. All right, I'll tell you what. You can build your shelter. And anyone who's here now... Hey. But uh, that, uh, that stack of rocks out there in the road, that's got to go. All right? But building a shelter big enough for a lot more seems a shame not to get the most juice out of it. I'm sorry, but that's my offer. What if people just happen to wander in? 
Then I guess they'll just have to wander out again. Oh, and uh, no trouble. If there's any trouble, either here or in town, the lease is canceled. Won't be any trouble, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I hope not. Now, what about these fellas here? Anybody here have any special skills of any kind? Sure, most of us have trades. You know, work with leather, you know, vests and belts, saddlebags. I'm a silversmith. Would you like to place an order for some silver spurs? Does beautiful work. <laughs> There's one step you forgot, the first one. Where's he going to get leather for the vests? Well, we uh, ain't got that and worked out yet, but once we... I hope it's not too strong, Carolyn. Ah, oh, it looks just right. Angie! Huh? Don't you dare make a scene. Now you get in that buggy and go home. We'll talk later. Now listen, Pa. You told him, didn't you? You saw me get in the buggy. You followed me here. Oh, no, Angie. Oh, yes, you did. I said we'd talk later. I'd rather talk now. I'm not a child, Pa. Then you ought to have more sense than take away riffraff like that. Hey, hut! My apologies, Major. I'll have more shot at sunrise. Unless you file charges of trespassing, I'm going to take action. Nobody's trespassing. They have my permission to stay here. Very well, then I'll take it up with the sheriff. Take what up? They haven't done anything. What about these groceries here taken from my store? Did you buy them? You're saying I stole them? I'm saying you coerced my daughter into stealing them for you. That isn't true. In the case of a minor, any undue pressure. There wasn't any. We'll let the judge decide that. Now you get in that buggy. I'm not ready to leave yet, Pa. Angie, I think you're better, Angie. All right. Whatever the costs, put it on my bill. No. Well, they'll pay for it. Or else. Hey, Pa, you know, uh, I think Billy's gonna start working for us tomorrow anyway. Why don't you just give him an advance on his wages? What do they owe you? Hey, man, you better take that gun off your face. I want to see you at my house early tomorrow morning. thinking too. Mr. Hoss eat enough, make cook feel like effort is not wasted. Mm. Very good food, Hop Jane. Besides, I gotta keep my strength up. I still got a lot of work to do up there at Seminole Canyon. Thank you. Thank you very much. How much that I'm gonna take? Mm. Probably a couple more days. You feeling all right, Joe? Yeah, I'll tell you what I was thinking about it. I was looking at all this food and just wondering if those people out in the woods had enough to eat. A lot of people in this world are hungry. Some are hungry because they can't work, and we should help them. Others are hungry because they can't find a job, and still others are hungry because they won't work. If they get hungry enough, they'll do something about it. If a man spends all his time working, he don't have any time to think. Where'd you hear that, Jamie? That's what Mr. Pellerman said. And where did you meet Mr. Pellerman? Th this morning at the camp on the way to school. Camp's not on the way to school. Well, I, I sort of went a little out of my way. But you did get to school on time. Well, I got to talking to Mr. Krulak when I let him have my silver dollar. You gave, you gave Krulak your silver dollar? No, sir, I'm just letting him use it. You see, he's gonna make me a concho for my belt. What are you doing with that steer? Just looking him over, Mr. Cartwright. 
No need to put him on the ground to look him over. There's a reason for that, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright, I'm really trying to... Angie. Not supposed to be any more cattle in this section. What's he doing here? You better ask him that. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Billy. You were supposed to report to my house for work this morning. Well, something came up I couldn't make it. Something more important than the bargain we made? That steer. He's stuck in that bog back there up to his neck. I don't see any mud on him. That's because we washed him off see what was wrong with him. You sure got an answer for everything, don't you? Well, Malarkey's music, I'd be a brass band. All right, let him up. See, he broke his leg trying to get out of that bog. Billy. Take Jamie and Andrew over there. Now, you know there's nothing we can do for. Hey, Jamie! Hey, I got something for you. It's beautiful, Mr. Krulak. I have to admit, it's not half bad. How'd you do it? Just takes the right kind of tools and a little work. Can you show me how? Sure. You get another silver dollar, and I'll make a better buckle for that belt. Look, Mr. Cartwright. It's very good. Navajo taught me. There wasn't anything that man couldn't do with a piece of silver. Billy. No need letting all that meat go to waste. I'm sure you can use it. Well, we can use it all. We can use the meat and the hide, the bones, even the hooves. I'm sorry about that wrong conclusion I jumped to. Well, that's all right. We're used to it. And sometimes you just ask for it. All right, Jamie, I'll drop you off at school on the way to town. Thanks, Mr. Clark. Get out that cow now? I'd like to, Palamon, but it's my ankle's giving me fits. Oh, well. That's all right. Krulak can help me. Come on. There's nothing wrong with your ankle. Well, well I'll tell you, Angie. I saw a lot of death when I was in the army, but somehow I just never got used to being around it. If we sow the seeds of doubt deep down in our minds They'll ramble and tangle till we strangle each other like vines Like it's already growing wild From Boston to Atlanta, Georgia And it won't be very long until it's over Sometimes I doubt and my mind begins to wonder if fighting for a woman will make me feel I'm stronger But I believe that loving her is better than dying for her Though it won't be very long Until it's What'd you do in the army? Well, did an awful lot of walking. And did some camping out, and then did a lot more walking. And then one day, a whole bunch of us fellers ran up the hill, shooting off our guns and yelling. And the fellers on the top of the hill started shooting off their guns and yelling, so we ran back down the hill again. But there was an officer down there, and he started yelling, shooting off his gun. So we run back up the hill, and then we run down the hill, and we run up the hill, and down the hill, and up and down, and... Wasn't anybody left to run no more.
And then somebody said, well, we didn't want that old hill anyway. That's when I lit out for the brush, and I guess they went looking for the hill they wanted. That's why you joined the Weary Willies? Well, you can't join the Weary Willies, because all of them are unjoined. Uh, we're just together because we understand each other. Angie? What do you suppose could satisfy the soul except to walk free and know no superior? That's Walt Whitman. Is that what you want to do the rest of your life? Walk free? I ain't going to run up no more hills nobody wants. Aren't there any hills you want to climb? What if I were on top of one of those hills? Well, I'd wave to you as I pass by. Mm. I'd probably miss you when you were behind me. sense to do. Come on. Through with you yet, mister. Let him go. Billy, please. Let him go, Palamon. You all right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ben, you seen Angie? No, not since this morning. She's out of the Willie's camp. Going out that way? They're just leaving. All right, along with you. All right. Your daughter, Major. My wife and I were driving out of town. We came across this empty buggy, ran alongside there where they, where they had that camp. And we heard some sounds in the woods, like, like it was somebody crying. She says something about a, some man pulling her into the woods. Get the doctor, please. Yeah. Angie. Angie, it's me, Paul. Can you hear me, Angie? Major, don't try to make a talk now. You're responsible for this. Letting them Willie stay at your ranch. No, we don't know that one of them did it. We're gonna get a posse together and find the man who did it. I got a pretty good idea where to start looking. How many of them weary willies are out, John? Who knows? They just keep on coming. The sheriff should have taken a bigger posse. Yeah. Maybe we better go along and give him a hand. Hello there, fellas. How you doing? This is about the best barbecued beef I've ever had. Could have had a touch too much salt. Thank you. 
Must be a wondrous thing being kicked from inside. Yes. Folks, I know you're all wondering what we're doing here, and if you give me a minute, I'll tell you. First off, you are not under arrest, but we are taking you into town for your own protection. Marty, you and Ed check those tents for weapons and make sure we don't leave anybody behind. Now, wait a minute. Suppose we don't want to go. Yeah. yeah. Then we just take you, that's all. Boys, help them load up in the wagons, will you, please? Mr. Cartwright, what's this all about? Willie, Angie Coulter was... Somebody assaulted my daughter. Was she hurt? Yes. Yeah, she was hurt. Come on, let's go. Hey, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with that, do you? Billy, nobody says you had anything to do with it or anybody else here, but I think it's best you come along with us. A lot of angry people in town, and they got their eye on all of you. Let me take a look at this. There's nothing dark. I got a call on the roof's bust. Oh, Angie. The sheriff wanted me to come over and ask if you, if you could remember anything that might help us identify the man. I left the camp early to get home before dark. When I got to Fern Creek, where the road narrows, there was a big branch across the road. I got out of the buggy and started to move the branch. Someone grabbed me from behind, dragged me into <laughs> woods. Do you remember what the man was wearing? Did you see that? Did he say anything? Could you remember his voice? No. 
knives behind me. And he had his hand over my mouth. Last thing I remember is digging my nails into his head and trying to make him let go. Sorry, Billy. Well, that ain't gonna help Penniman. No, I guess it won't. For what it's worth, Marcus and the others are in jail. How's Angie? She's about as well as can be expected, I guess. Those blankets that have been torn up and everything around here that's been smashed up and have all been replaced, Billy. You're welcome to stay on. Oh, no. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Well... Maybe you'll change your mind. No, sir. I don't think so. Do you think it's going to be any different in the next town? Or the next? I don't know, but I just keep on hoping. What? People will... will change. Oh, they'll stop being selfish and greedy and suspicious and violent. And be what? Like you. Is that what you want? A world full of people like you. Oh, that'd be so bad. No. The world just can't stop. It just can't sit under a tree in the shade and dream about the future. You, you have to make the future. And they won't be me, Mr. Cartwright, because I don't like this world. Then change it. Don't withdraw from it, Billy. Become part of it. Make it better. You tell me. Why should I? Because it's the only world you've got.
When the blue and gray were fighting, I found the blood brother. And when the smoke had cleared, we stuck with each other. Spilled blood at Chickamauga, and the cannon roared that day. But it bound us together to right thinking ways. We were blood brothers. And we